Behold my new pottery wheel. Now I know what you're thinking. That's not a new pottery wheel. That's an old washing machine. None of those words were correct. But I promise you, I'm going to attempt to make this into a pottery wheel. I do not promise that I will be successful. So, I guess we'll call that dramatic suspense. Sure, why not? Okay, so here's why I think this will work. I'm going to draw you a little schematic here. A washer, top load washer, has a bunch of parts. This is going to be pretty bad. Very simplified. Here's the inner tub. Here's the outer tub. This part spins. This part's stationary. It's attached to a frame, which goes down to, to kind of hold this, and you know, it come, kind of comes under here also. And down here is a big pulley. So how this works, there's a motor on this washer. The motor is off to the side and spins a pulley. Wow, this is a terrible drawing. Spins the pulley, which spins this big wheel. The big wheel spins this shaft, which goes through some bearings and seals to spin this. There's also bearings down here. And uh, there, there's a seal here to keep water and soap and crap out of the bearings. And this has to spin, this inner tub has to spin at a very high rate of speed. Like during spin, it can be like hundreds of RPM, some washers up to a thousand, this one probably not. Uh, but the outer tub stays stationary. So this, the top of this shaft, this is the only thing. This top of this shaft has to support the drum full of wet clothes spinning at hundreds of RPM without wobbling too much that the tops of these rub together. Now this, this, this separation here, is only like an inch, inch and a half. So this is a very stable, a very stable kind of shaft. And uh, if you spin this, it'll spin, well actually, on this, if you spin this wheel, it'll spin the whole drum. There's a coupler in here that disengages, and it'll spin a secondary shaft up the middle only, which is attached to your agitator. Forget all of that. That was pointless. Don't know why I just said that, because we're not using an agitator with a pottery wheel. This particular washer hangs on supports. I'm going to get rid of those also. Don't know why I told you about that. Get rid of the, uh, the inner drum. Gone. Probably have to cut the outer drum down and make legs for this. Then find a way to power this wheel. Attach my own wheel on top of here. That will be like the, the top of the pottery wheel. See where I'm going? This particular washer this motor's shot, throwing out most of the washer, and uh, just gonna, gonna play it by ear. We'll see how it works. This arrangement is unique to, to GE washers, but they go under a bunch of different names, and if you're gonna buy a new washing machine, don't buy a GE washing machine. I don't think most washers will work for a pottery wheel. That's why I picked this one specifically out of our scrap shed. Let the teardown begin! I really hope that was understandable. If it wasn't, I apologize. But it's not my fault. I've never made a pottery wheel before. So obviously most of this thing is not going to be useful. I'm going to throw a lot of it, well not throw a lot of it, but I'm going to give a lot of it to the scrap metal guy. Get lost ground. It's almost freeing to just be able to rip things apart and not have to save them. You know, generally at work, my job is to fix them, so if you just tear them all apart, it's pretty hard to get them back together again. Goodbye, water level sensor tube. Ooh, that'll remove some weight. I told a friend of mine, the guy who gave me those uh, railroad spikes, he wants to make this into a chicken plucker. And the part in question. Well, this whole unit can go bye-bye. I am going to save these, though. These have springs inside. Uh, springs can be useful. And then I sometimes use these for forgings. Sometimes, I mean, I've done it a couple times. So next plan, remove big concrete weight, remove fried motor. Do you see this? This spins, spins the thing underneath. So it's like the wheel part is built in. I just have to put it on a stand, power this wheel, and put a platform on the other side. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, do they make this hard to take off? You have to take the whole frame off the tub? Oh, never mind. I was just being stupid. <laughs> And yes, concrete weight. Most washers these days have some kind of weights in them. That's where that cast iron thing was that I melted into an ingot. That was a, a washer weight. That was from a Whirlpool top loader. That Whirlpool, by the way, would probably not make a good pottery wheel. Goodbye, concrete brick. I'm gonna cut this off. This is an overflow. 
Now we'll probably want to chop this down. We'll start with like halfway. I wonder if this will work. Oh yeah! There, looks a lot more like a pottery wheel now, doesn't it? And if I spin the pulley, yeah, look at that. Okay, now the question is, do I attach to this? Do I attach up here? This and this and this, there's, there's lots of options. I'm spoiled for choice on how to attach to this thing. I decided to break out one of my other toys and play with it a little bit. Aha! Ta-da! Because what's what good is having a 3D printer if you're not going to actually use it for something useful now and then? Uh, this this is just something I designed. You see this little hex thing? It goes over this nut fairly tight. This shaft, the whole thing, goes over the shaft fairly tight. And I got three screw points that printed a little smaller than I would have liked, but that that's fine. If this doesn't work, I can I can revise the model and reprint again. So I'm going to shove it on there. Okay, let me see. I think I need a hammer. Yeah, I'll just drop it here. No need to swing. Maybe I should have shaved that off. I don't know. But there's there's no slop in this. Let's see if I spin the wheel, see if that wobbles at all. And I can't spin it smoothly, so I don't know. Okay, so with that sort of on its way to being taken care of, I thought of a bunch of different ways to, to power this, and I settled on the one that will be the most ridiculous looking, because that's more fun. I'll show you. Ta-da! A Razor Scooter! I got this from a friend of mine. It does not work. It had a, a blown uh, speed control board. I threw that all out and wired in my own top quality wiring to a switch making it permanently on or off, and the switch falls off for like no reason. So this is twice as dangerous as it used to be. Uh, which was a lot. These are very dangerous. So it took me a while to figure out how to make this thing like work on a washing machine. But I took it apart, took all the junk out of it, including the rigged up wiring with the crappy blue electrical tape that I did to make the scooter work. By the way, I never fell off the scooter, but I also only rode it about 50 feet. Part of that is because I'm a grown man and riding a kid's scooter is kind of weird, but also because I'm too cowardly to ride this thing. It is, like, crazy dangerous. What you can't hear me saying because the microphone stopped working, this is a DC motor, and it's it's kind of easy to, to handle speed control on DC motors. It's just voltage. You know, more voltage is more power, less voltage is less power. It's not so easy on, like, an AC motor, but I don't have an AC-powered scooter. Of course, I don't have a way to throttle the, the voltage other than, like, connecting and disconnecting more batteries. So, uh, yeah, put a pin in that for the future. What I had to do to make this fit on the shaft was a little bit complicated. There aren't enough threads, so I had to grind them, grind the bolts thinner. That's probably not a great idea, but it, it worked. So how bad of an idea can it be? Then I had to chop up the scooter itself. Uh, I also had to uh, figure out a way to attach the motor bracket to the, the washer. I ended up just attaching like brackets to the bracket, if that makes sense. Double bracketing. You can see here I'm, I'm testing some brackets that I made with clamps. And then after I found out that kind of worked sort of well, I just welded it together. Fun fact, you see those, uh, those ear muffs on my ears? Yeah, during this project, I got no weld spatter down my ear canal. So, uh, I, I appreciated that very much. Oh boy, that was a lot more work than I anticipated. So you saw me just welding these two brackets to this, what remains of the frame of the Razor scooter, with this little bracket that mounts on there. You saw me fighting with this, what I ended up having to do is go to the hardware store, Get another nut in a washer. This was the original bottom nut from this washing machine. And uh, it kind of, this this thing here matched up pretty well with this, this disc. So when I tightened it with the washer, tightened it all down and it kind of self-centered it. So that's that was handy. That was really nifty. Otherwise I was going to have to figure out a way to center this, which there's no way I could have done right. And then welded it together or something. And uh, at least this way it's all removable. And I can take it back to uh, 
however else should in the future I decide this Chinese scooter motor is not up to the task, which I'm starting to think it won't be up to the task. But I soldiered on anyway. Another thing you probably didn't see me do is take this little piece of steel here, cut some holes in it, and stick these bolts through. I should probably remove these because this is interesting to point out. Okay, those, those threads are really long and I'm getting impatient. Where did the chain go? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I, I didn't save the, the chain tensioner from the scooter either, so I'm going to tighten the chain by uh, moving this bracket back and forth and tightening it down with this. These nuts and bolts, they're just nuts and bolts from the hardware store. They're nothing special. Just, you know, lots of staring at it and going, hmm, hmm. I'm going to put this all together and we're going to test it and make sure it works before we go to sticking legs on this beast. Moment of truth. Ooh. Chain's a little loose. Okay, now that we got like a drive system that sort of works, I want to talk about a stand, which brings us to the woodworking portion of this washing machine, razor, scooter, pottery wheel. I want to make kind of like this platform. This is just some off cuts of scrap wood I had piled in the corner. I got more of them piled over there. And uh, I think if I, if I screw them together like this and attach them, then I can sort of stack on the corners things to figure out the height. Now I'm not going to make anything permanent. Uh, I want to make a permanent stand out of steel, but steel being as expensive as it is these days, I'm not willing to experiment with it. I'm going to experiment with nice free wood. And this will also allow me to kind of zero in on the height that I want. I, I don't, I've never really used a pottery wheel. I've used one for 20 minutes in a class. It wasn't even a pottery class. It was a, it was a screwing around day uh, in an archaeological ceramic analysis class. You know, just try to, try to do potteries. You might learn something. That's what, that's what it was. So I really don't know the proper height of one of these, the proper way to sit, uh, how to use them even. It's kind of weird. Building one, don't even know anything about them. But this, this, will, this will allow me to adjust it easily and kind of zero in, especially once I figure out like the chair situation and all of that. So, looks ugly and temporary, but that's only because it is both of those things. Don't know if this little electric screwdriver will do it, but we'll find out. Oh yeah! Uh-oh, screwing into a knot. This might be tricky. Er, knots are extra dense. Oh, no problem. Now, oh, nice temporary attachment method. Some C-clamps. You can tell this is extra temporary. Consider this the, the beta test. Not even version 1.0 of a pottery wheel. This is version 0.1. This way I can work out all of the bugs or just release it to the public before it's ready. Looking at you, Bethesda. All right, is it strong enough? Sure seems like it. These two clamps, these are tough clamps. Okay, now I need something to stack. Um, I know. <clears throat> Casting flasks. I don't really want to go this janky, but at the moment the hardware store is closed. So, uh, do what you gotta do. I'm also too impatient to make something out of wood because I want to play with this thing. Huh, that is shockingly stable. And now for this, probably a good idea to pre-drill pre them though. Oh, that plastic is unhappy. That plastic is very unhappy. This is PLA plastic, by the way. Not particularly strong. But it is what was in the printer when I walked downstairs. Now here's another issue. This is the only piece of half-inch plywood I have. And this is not very big. Uh, so I'm just gonna make it not very big. It's not permanent anyway. I mean, plywood around moisture, it's not a good idea. So I'm gonna cut this out, make a circle out of this, and uh, just try it out for a little while. And then when the hardware store is open, when it's not Christmas Day, I will go buy a bigger piece of probably not plywood. It's not real great. You can get marine grade plywood, that's probably fine. But I don't have any of that. Let's see, a piece of paper here. Now if you get your finger dirty and just rub it, you make like a, a dirt rubbing. 
can even get the holes to come through a little bit. There you go. Hole, hole, hole. Template. And then I can reuse this piece of paper for other templates because I am a tightwad. That is not well centered. Going to countersink the holes the probably not correct way using a chisel tip knife. That is very off center. Yes, I realize this is not the recommended use of an angle grinder. Sue me. Actually, don't sue me, please. I can't afford legal fees. Alright, now you'll have to forgive me because I don't know how any of this works, but I got some clay, I got a bucket of water, took my ring off, and I'm going to try. Got me a handful of clay. <clears throat> First throwing attempts. I sort of centered it, not really. Sort of made a vessel, not really. And, uh, fun fact, it, it's not easy. Turns out I'm using the wrong clay, but also I stuck. Well, that was going well. No, it wasn't. It wasn't going well. You don't have to lie. Oh, it's all squidgy. Next try. Future attempts aren't so bad, except when the pot exploded. All right. Mission accomplished. Here, some of the clay ended up over there. Okay, things I've learned. Splash guard is good. Throwing pots, I'm bad. I gotta fix this wobble and speed control is necessary. But hey, success! You too can turn a washing machine and a razor scooter into a pottery wheel. Not a great one, but if you want a great one, buy one. Don't try to make one out of junk you have laying around like I just did. And now, before the family Christmas gathering, I'm gonna have to go clean it.